Because how else do you explain the events that happened? I am in the middle of the ocean. Nobody's around me. One wave comes up and a man is instantly there ready to save me. Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Brother Mario. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're brand new, welcome. The purpose of this channel is I'm here to show you that we are real apostolics, real problems with real solutions, all solved in a divine way. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all my testimony on how I found God, or rather, should I say how he found me. That's something that vibes with you. Continue watching. All right. So the story I'm going to be sharing with you all is part of my testimony. And before I kind of get into the testimony and, you know, I tell you the story how I almost drowned and God saved me and, and everything that happened in between. Um, I feel like that we as Christians, those who have found God, I feel like he finds us in, in different ways. And let me kind of explain what I mean by that. I feel like that uh, God has a greater plan for each one of us. And for some people, he's got to be harder than others. Some people never encounter death and they find Christ. Some people, just like me, encounter death, you know, multiple times in our lives to really find out who God is. But in this particular moment, when God found me, this was the first time I realized that there was something greater than me, that there was a higher being, and that Jesus, God, though I questioned who he was, if he was even real, Let's just say he made himself very known to me in that moment. And so I'll never forget this day. It was a Tuesday, July 19th, 2005. I will just turned 15 and uh, my best friend Chase, he invited me to go down to Panama City Beach to with his family and stay at the, the 27th floor in his condo at Twin Tower Resort. And it was awesome. I mean, if you guys ever been to Panama City Beach, it is white sands, beautiful weather all the time. I mean, ocean looks perfect. It's on the Gulf side, so it's not like the nasty brown, it's blue. It's just beautiful and you can have a great time there. And uh, you know, while I was there, uh, I, had, I had some fun. I mean, I had every type of worldly fun you can think of, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about that Tuesday when God humbled me and, and showed me who he was. You know, it was just like any other Tuesday, right? Uh, we had been there since Sunday. We had a great time Sunday, Monday. I mean, Tuesday was just going to be a continuation of the party we were living. I mean, we'd wake up. We went out to dances. We ate good food you know, met girls, the whole nine, right? Everything world that you can think of. I mean, I went through it, right? I'm, I'm not going to deny that, uh, you know, it was a very unholy week for me, but Tuesday was the day that God put me in my place. He humbled me. And so we wake up that morning and man, the waves were kicking. The waves were pumping that day. And we could not wait to get back in the ocean and see really what the day had planned for us. And so we were about to go out and then my buddy stopped me and he says, man, why don't we go out to the sandbar today? And I don't really know what a sandbar was, but man, in short, basically what a sandbar is, is like you have the shore right here and then you have like this other block of sand, like usually 20, 30 yards out from the ocean and there'll be like this little valley of water. And if you swim over it, you can get to the sandbar and it looks like people are literally standing on water and i thought all right cool let's go there so chase was a swimmer he had been on the swim team i was not but i was not about to let my inability as a swimmer to know make the day boring i was like all right let's go you know i'm 15 i'm not thinking about any of the consequences i'm thinking about you know the fun that's attached to it i'm not thinking about any of the risk i'm thinking about none of that i'm just thinking let's get to the other side let's see what happens so we get out there and we start swimming and we're going at it and then Chase is making great progress. And you know, me not being a really great swimmer, I was wanting to like keep my feet on the sand the whole time. I was wanting to know if I could really tiptoe my way all the way to the sandbar until I really needed to swim. Well, I wasn't too far into this 20, 30 yard voyage until I have to start swimming myself. 
So we, so I start swimming and the waves are, like I said, they're really pumping today. So when I'm taking like two strokes forward, the waves pulling me one stroke back. And so I'm really not making that much progress. So it wasn't about 10, 15 minutes later, I'm swimming, I'm swimming. I am trying, my, I'm giving everything I've got to battle these waves. And I feel like I'm not making any progress. So I'm really stuck in the middle. Um, I feel like that I don't have the energy to make it to the other side of the sandbar, but I feel like I may have enough energy to kick back and just make it to shore, right? Uh, I feel safer on the shore than I do, you know, being in the middle of the ocean on the sandbar. So I yelled to Chase, Chase, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go hang out here. I don't think I can make it. So he's over there. He's already talking to some other people. Um, and I start, I start backstroking. And cause that was the thing that was easiest to me. That's the only, that's the only way I could figure out how to float. So I start backstroking and then the moment happened. I'm not sure if y'all know what a riptide is, but a riptide for one, for whatever strange reasons in underwater physics, a tide happens underneath that competes with the tide on top. And if you're caught in the middle of it, what it can literally do is pull you under. And guess what? I was the guy caught in the middle of that who got pulled under. And not only did I get pulled under, I happen to be breathing in at the same moment. So as I'm breathing in, I get pulled under and my very next breath involuntarily is all salt water. <laughs> mm. I mean, just lungs filled with salt water. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have ever been in a situation where you're about to drown, but the one thing they tell you not to do is to not panic. And guess what I did? I did the one thing they told me not to do and I started panicking. And so as soon as I get up, I'm really struggling now, okay? Mind you, I'm already exhausted from trying to get there for the first time. Now, I'm oxygen deprived. I've got lungs full of salt water and I'm barely kicking and scrappling to get to the surface. And so at this point, I get up for my first breath and I just blow out salt water and then I just want oxygen desperately in that moment. I have never wanted oxygen more in my life than in that moment. And I just want to breathe in and just, and I, I realize panic is starting to settle in. And the thing is, I did not want to make a scene. I didn't want to have to be that person you see in movies or you hear about on the news who, who yell out, help, help, help. And then, you know, everyone's attention goes to saving you. I just didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to bring attention to me. Not in that type of way. And so I remember just starting to struggle and then all of a sudden riptide number two whew, pulls me down and my head's under the water and, and I'm really starting to question this entire trip. I'm starting to question everything in my life of was it worth it? Was it worth it to make this decision to try to go to the same bar? And I remember in that moment, the one thing that I thought of more than anything was the church. Now, the church to me in that time was just casual. I mean, I didn't take church seriously. I really didn't even know if God or Jesus existed, the Christian faith, the cross. I really didn't know any of that. I just know church was mundane to me. It was just boring, to be honest with you. But in that moment, that was actually the first thing that I thought of. And if I was going to find out who God was, who Jesus was, it was going to be that moment that I find out who he is. And so as I'm struggling and I get pulled under the second time, I come back up and it was the first time and it's been the only time in my life that I can remember where I have literally said these words out loud, God, please save me. I repeat, God, please save me. And all of a sudden, third wave comes up and I just kind of ride with it, float with it, come back down, not knowing what's going to happen this third time. But a man literally comes out of nowhere. And when I tell you that nobody was around me at that moment, nobody was around me. 
But nonetheless, this man comes out of nowhere, and the only thing I remember about him is he had black Oakley glasses, older gentleman, bald, with a huge mustache. And all of a sudden, he said, son, grab onto this board. And so me, without any question, I grab onto that thing, and I'm holding on for dear life. And he's, he's rocking me in to shore, and I'm just catching my energy, and I'm just trying to kick the water behind me to just help him all that I can. And so he's got one hand over here pulling, and his other hand is just pulling me, you know, pulling the water to get to shore. And finally, we get to shore. I mean, I didn't even wait till I could touch the touch the, the sand underneath the water. I just wanted to touch the sand. And so as soon as we get there, I literally collapse out of, out of exhaustion. I mean, I had nothing inside of me. And all of a sudden, I don't have, I, I, I just, I can't even think in that moment. And then he gets up leaves the board and walks and and i'm telling you this is just like a movie it's literally like a movie i remember just laying my head see if i can dramatize this for you but i remember laying my head on the sand and just looking out that way and he just walks doesn't say a word to me doesn't allow me to give time to give him thanks for literally saving my life and to this day, whew, I get goosebumps thinking about this, but to this day, I truly believe that was not a man. That was an angel sent from God to respond to my plea for help. Because how else do you explain the events that happened? I am in the middle of the ocean. Nobody's around me. One wave comes up and a man is instantly there ready to save me. And he says those only few words to me, son, grab onto this board, swims me to shore, walks off, says not a single word to me. What else could it be? What else could it be? It was an angel. I'm telling you all, it was an angel and God Listen to me that day. And in that moment when I'm collapsed, I'm just thinking, wow, God is real. God is real. He saved me. And it was in that moment, and I'll be honest with you, I still didn't live the most holy life as soon as I got saved that week. Not for the next few years. I didn't get baptized in Jesus' name till I was 21. But at 15, yeah, I knew God existed. I had no question at that point. Because the moment that I yelled out, God, please save me, was the very next moment a man comes out of nowhere in the middle of the ocean to save me. I mean, I've told this story to people and I get the same exact response. Bro, I just got chills. I just got chills. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that really happened. And that's how I found out who God was. That's how I found out, at least in those moments, that there was a greater being outside of me. That I was no longer just Mario, that it was Mario and something greater than me. And that's how I found God. So I hope this message has touched you. I hope this is the testimony that you can share with someone. If you have been in a near death encounter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if God saved you, you really know what I'm talking about. So share this video uh, with your friends and just understand God is real. God is so real. And over the next few years, it, it took me a while, but I finally discovered who he really is. And I'm thankful for that moment. And I pray that nobody ever has to go through that to experience near death encounters. 
But if it takes that for you to find out who God really is, so be it. Hope you all enjoyed this story and this testimony. My name is Brother Mario. Remember, we are real apostolics, real problems with real solutions, all solved in a divine way. Be blessed. Be less stressed. Peace.